Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the Hisense U76K. This is a budget television for Hisense. Now in this video, we're gonna unbox it all the way up to showing you what this TV has to offer and see if it's the right one for you. Now this is a 55 inch version, has Google TV, Quantum Dots, as well as Dolby Vision and Dolby Outmos. And the fact that this TV is under $300, the question is, is it worth your hard earned money? Now, since I'm seeing this for the very first time, we're gonna experience this together. So sit back and relax and let's get started. All right, so let's go and get this out of the box. But I will tell you that even though this is a 55 inch and it's a Best Buy exclusive, they do make larger sizes, so you can get this in a 65 or a 75 inch. And there's actually something different about those models over this one when it comes to inputs. So here's the remote control that comes with it. It looks like a little more slimmer design than the previous Hisense. It has your Google voice command there, navigation keys. And at the bottom here, we have hot keys like Netflix, Prime, and a few other ones. But that's what you get on the remote control. Now it does come with some feet on it. It looks like they require two screws. They're made out of plastic. But I do want to point out they do have rubber on the bottom of it to keep from scratching the surface. And the last thing you get in the box is the batteries for the remote control, a power cord, and a safety guide, plus the screws for the feet. And there's a cardboard in here to protect the screen, which is pretty good packing overall. Now, Hisense do recommend that you use two people to take this TV out of the box, but I think I can handle this one. It's not too heavy. On the bottom of it, it looks like it does have a metal contact to mount the feet. Over here we have a speaker system. So it looks like little tiny speakers, but we'll listen to the audio a little bit later. And then if we go to the center, there's a press button to get to the basic menu. And it looks like some LEDs right here on the front. Now here, there's a little T design. You can see the T right there. You just put it in like that and go ahead and screw the feet in place. I know the back panel is not that important to a lot of people because it's gonna be against the wall, but I would like to show you every time so you can know what it looks like. So over here we have like this patterning and it looks like it's gonna be heat sinks behind it. And I really like the design. It looks like a triangle right there to keep the TV rigid. But it's kind of puzzling why they designed it this way. Instead of putting all the screw holes on this back piece right here, they kind of made this indention so you'll have to put spacer on it to make it flush. It's just kind of interesting just to see the back of it like that. Now it does use a standard plug and it's removable and that's something that I really like. On this side, you're gonna have a headphone jack and you have that older AV input. So at least Hisense still putting that on there. And that's a, one of the features that people might want if you have older equipment. As far as the input panel, we have a reset. You have three HDMI 2.0s and these are all 60 Hertz. But there's an eARC on here and that's for that Adobe Atmos pass-through. You get two USBs, your standard ATSC TV tuner, as well as a fiber optic. And over here we have an ethernet input if you don't wanna use Wi-Fi. Another thing I want you to know is that this 55 has the three HDMIs. If you go with the 65 or 75, you get four HDMIs just in case you need more inputs and you prefer a larger screen, you'll have those additional connections. Now, the last thing I'll tell you is that this TV does have a screen protector and you just pull this little yellow tab here in the corner. And that's always a satisfying sound. Now to get to this point, I went through the setup menu. I had to put in my Gmail account. I had to put in the Wi-Fi password as well as do a lot of check boxes for terms and conditions. And I had to pair the Bluetooth remote control that comes with it. And that includes pressing the back and home button until the TV identifies. Now when it comes to the design of this TV, it has this bezel that goes around the edge, but I will tell you that there's a little bit of lip where you can fill the glass. On the bottom here, we have those feet that I showed you guys earlier. In the corner, we have that Adobe Vision uh, logo. And if you press that button that I showed you earlier, you get this on-screen menu, and you can just tap on it to get through all the different settings. Now this TV is powered by the Google operating system. I have showed it to you time and time again, but the layout is this. You have this top row where you can see live TVs, your apps, and your library. And if you go over here to your settings, you see it has a built-in screen saver, you have all your picture settings as well as your Wi-Fi access. And if you go into the details of these picture settings, it has plenty of picture modes such as your theater day, your standard energy savings, game, sports, theater night, and filmmakers mode. So it is pretty packed with all the features. Now, if you know what you're doing, you can go and make all kinds of adjustments, but if you're not, they do have what they call smart screen where you can have the screen to automatically figure out the best picture, 
You also have advanced settings. And inside of here, this is where you control all your motion and things like that. And there's a calibration setting. So again, with the right equipment, you can go in here and fine tune the television to get the best results. It's powered by Google TV version 11 and it has 7.3 of total storage and that includes all your applications, your audio files or anything that you load up directly into the television. It has built in ambient mode where you can use Google Photos, Art Gallery and you can display weather and a few other things on the screen. And just to let you know, if you do Google Photo, it will require the Google Home application and you will need to link it up to a Google Photo Cloud, but you can have your family pictures to display on the TV screen whenever you're not using it. It does support Chromecast, so you can send your YouTube videos and things like that from your smartphone, and it will support Apple AirPlay and HomeKit. In addition to all that, this TV also supports your Alexa devices, so you can go through the setup and give it access to your account so you can control your lights and things like that directly from the TV remote. So this TV is packed full of features, but let's take a look and see what the picture looks like. In my opinion, this TV has a lot of great value to it and the fact that it's not very expensive. You can see that the picture quality on it is really good considering that it is not a higher end TV. But I will tell you that it's not perfect and I'll show you that in just a minute, but just want to show you what it generally looks like. Another thing that I find impressive is that the motion on this television appears to be very smooth and very fluid. So I don't think you're having any kind of problems watching sporting events or even those 24 frames per second movies. Now here's the skin tones on this television. And I will tell you that they're a little bit more on the brighter side. And that's what you really want on HDR content to bring up those black levels. Now when it comes to uniformity, you're gonna see that like most TVs, it's gonna be a little bit brighter in the center of the television, but it does use direct backlights, which is gonna be much better than some of the edge lit televisions out there on the budget. But switching over to an all black image, we'll see a little bit of light bleed coming into the panel. And it's mainly because this TV doesn't support local dimming zones. But then again, you're not paying a lot of money to get a TV like this. I didn't see much blooming and mainly because this is a VA panel and that's going to be a lot helpful for those better inky contrast ratios. Now switching over to a movie, we're playing Disney Plus here and I think the TV looks fantastic in HDR. But keep in mind when it comes to all black scenes, you're going to see some of that backlight glow, but it's expected. Now switching over to sports, you can see that the players are very fluent. As they move around on the screen, you're not going to get that motion blur that you will get from some TVs. Now again, I'm not saying this TV is perfect, but for everything that I'm seeing, I think you're gonna be fine whether you're watching football, soccer, basketball, baseball. I feel that you're gonna be very satisfied overall. The A76K does have a basic gaming menu, and if you press those three lines right there when you have it on your gaming console, you can then get access to the gaming menu. Now inside this gaming menu, you can turn the information on, and it's gonna show your frames per second. It's also gonna show HDR, now this TV will show VRR on the screen, but it doesn't support variable refresh rate and it has auto low latency right there. And you can also move this around the screen just by hitting these different things. You can move that little box any corner that you like. Another thing I will point out is that you need to put the TV in gaming mode and that will trigger the auto low latency so you get better input lag. This TV has some cool gaming features and if you have it on your Xbox, PS5, computer, you hit these three lines on the remote control and then you get this sidebar right here. Now, if you turn on gaming information, you then get this little box right here. It shows you your frames per second, if HDR is turned off or on. This TV will support variable refresh rate and there's your auto low latency so you get better input lag. And if you need to, you can also change the location of where you want that display to show as you can see right here. Now to get all these options, you need to go into the picture mode and make sure that it's set to game and not these other settings so you get the best experience. But let's take a look at the Xbox settings so we can see all the different things that it will support. Under TV display, you can see that it will support 4K. If we go into the details, you can see that it will support 60 Hertz, but this is not a 120 Hertz television. And down here, you get this triangle for Adobe Vision and I'll show you why. If you go back and go into the video modes, you can turn on Dolby Vision right there. So if I go ahead and check that on, this TV supports everything. And look at this, auto low latency. If you go down to variable refresh rate, you can have it for gaming or always on. It does support the YCC 422, 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, Dolby Vision Gaming. And the great thing is that you just basically go into this TV, 
put in gaming mode and you're ready to go for everything. And far as input lag, let's take a look and see what we get. And that's a respectful 9.7 milliseconds. I feel that this TV is gonna be great for gamers out there with that low input lag, but let me show you a couple examples of what gameplay looks like. On this video, I showed you everything that you need to know. And of course, there's a lot more functionality that this TV can do, but I really think that this might be the best budget television out so far. And the reason I say that is because you're talking about for gamers, you, you got 9.7 milliseconds of input lag, you have variable refresh rate, you have auto low latency. And I like the fact that this TV has the gaming zone, so you can check out all your different frame rates and everything that's happening in your game. And I really like how natural the colors look on this TV. All the demos that I showed you were in theater day mode and it seems to really have a good picture. So I think you're gonna be satisfied with that. And when it comes to color reproduction, as a consumer, I think you're gonna be happy. This would be great for you know someone who wants to get a 4K TV and get started. The motion rate was smooth and the content looked really good on this TV. And the fact that it supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos pass-through I think it's gonna have everything that serves you as a consumer. Now, as far as the bad stuff, I would say that the thing that stuck out to me is that if you play any movies that has really dark content on it, you're absolutely gonna see the backlights, but you can go in there and adjust that to make the picture a little bit darker to make it have better contrast, but it is something that you're gonna notice if you get some bright levels going on. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the overall picture. And even watching this 1080p signal on this television, I think it does a really good job of upscaling. And if I switch it over to 4K, again, can you notice much difference between the two pictures? This is 4K versus the 1080p where it's upscaling. I mean, of course, you're gonna get a little bit more sharper picture by having more resolution, but it's doing a good job with that. So do I recommend going to get this TV? I say if you're on a budget, you definitely wanna consider this TV because all the feature has to offer. I think you're gonna be very satisfied. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.